What's up, hackers? Welcome back to Hacker Warehouse TV, a great show for InfoSec neighbors. I'm your host, Troy Brown, and today we're at DEF CON 25 with Max Bazali talking about jailbreaking the Apple Watch. Thanks for stopping by, Max. Yep. Hi, everyone. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah? <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and give us uh, an elevator version of your talk? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I was presenting the jailbreak for Apple Watch. And sure. it's one of the smartwatch devices that was like, released a few uh, years ago. Mm -hmm. And that just was interesting for me as a you know, security researcher point of view. Why not try to hack it? Why not try to jailbreak it? Yeah. And run some, I don't know, tweak, some code on it. So yeah, it was a pretty good challenge for me. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I can present it like, on a dev -con. And you were able to jailbreak it. You showed people kind of how you did it and how you went about it. Yeah, so we, we used some of the patch vulnerabilities mm -hmm. that was used on iOS. So I got uh, ported them to back to Apple Watch. Okay. With some with some difference, there are like difference between iOS and watchOS kernels. And okay. this is what like the most difficult part for me to port this exploit. Can you give us some detail? On what are some of those differences? Like, what are some of the small differences between like the, the OS for the watch and regular OS? Sure. Uh, the most as I say the most significant difference are. Uh, offsets and internal structures play out between the iOS and watches, mm -hmm. which leads that I cannot reuse all my knowledge about the iOS on watches. So just the same offset, the same address, just don't work. Okay. Just ah, oh, okay. So I, it's like I don't need to like identify everything from scratch. Wow. So you're like viewing the memory map, trying yeah. to toggle a bit to exactly. see what happens. So I just scan the memory and look for the, um, I don't know, some constants that I know. I say, oh, hey, it looks very similar to what I've seen on, on IAS, but here it's located for a completely different offset. That's cool. That's like the very basics of hacking, right? You're yeah. looking at the memory map, trying to figure it out. And yeah, the big thing for me was how to get the watch as kernel. It was like half of my talk. Yeah. Um, I was managed to it's basically read the kernel memory by four bytes each time. So like read four bytes, crash the device. Wait like ten <laughs> minutes, read another four bytes, crash the device. Nice. So it takes like two weeks for me to, to dump this watch as kernel. So when you're done, what was exploitable? Well, as soon as I can read a part of the kernel with this like four bytes per each time, mm -hmm. uh, I can construct exploit which basically exploit use of the free vulnerability. Okay. From like iOS, uh, but, but now I know the part of the kernel I can like, basically set the offsets to, to make it work for watch right? Okay. So this vulnerability works from a sandbox, so I don't need to care about that. I just install application on the watch, uh -huh. click on it, and yeah, we got a jailbreak. That is cool. Now, was it tethered or was it untethered, or is there like certain things you could do one or the other? How does that work? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, the jailbreak that I show on the DEF CON is, un uh, is tethered. But I have a tethered part of it as well. Okay. I just uh, there is a risk to boot loop your device if you like install the tether part. With, okay. Uh, the tether part, sorry. And so that's why I decided like to, to keep it for now to make sure it works. Okay. As soon as I get another uh, Apple Watch device that I can break, <laughs> I will continue to work on the tether part. And but, so the exploit that you had when you were all done, I mean, is that public? Or is that private? How does that work? Well, the vulnerability is public. The information about the vulnerability is public. Uh, okay. We even made a um, pretty big white paper on how to exploit this box okay. back like, uh, like half a year ago. Okay. Uh, and the difference how to exploit it on WatchOS is all on my presentation. So in okay. other words, uh, readers can just take the white paper, the record of the talk, and construct their own exploit. But okay. for now, it's only for internal usage. I mean, the actual. So that's interesting. You said it it was half a year ago when you guys wrote the white paper. When did the research begin? Because I mean, today you're at DEF CON, you know, it, that, and I think that's good information for people out there knowing like from the day you began research to presenting at DEF CON, what was that timeline like? Yeah, that, that's a good question uh, because some of those vulnerabilities, they were fixed on iOS, mm -hmm. but not fixed on watches. So I basically can reuse some of the vulnerabilities that was like half a year ago. Oh, OK. And we discovered a new vulnerability and basically send it to Apple, mm -hmm. wait until they fix it, and then use in the jailbreak. I would say I would start working on a watch air jailbreak in early January okay. and finish it in uh, like mid-February. Let's take like okay. more than a month. And did you use, like that's a long timeline, did you use the same tools and techniques the whole way along? Or did like new tools become available that allowed you to do things easier? That, that's a good question. Uh, 
I had to recompile the whole uh, tools package to work on uh, Apple Watch because it's have like very specific architecture RM7K. Okay. So we cannot just take some tool from earlier versions of iOS or like the newer versions. It's just not working. So I get to. Uh, Download all the source code from uh, Apple Open Source, like okay. for all of the command line tools, and recompile everything uh, like manually. Uh, interesting. Like all of the like SSH client, all of the command line tools, so just everything. So I would say I, I can use the like old techniques, but mm -hmm. I get to recompile the full package. Were, were there any updates that were sent to the watch where all of a sudden a tool or a technique you were using stopped working? Yeah, well, for sure. Uh, I was working on a watch here, three jailbreak as well. Uh -huh. And uh, like this research is still ongoing. And uh, Apple basically fixed the vulnerability to use, so our jailbreak okay. will, will work until uh, Watch OS 3.1.3. Okay. So ever since it's fixed it after that. Work. So just to be clear, the vulnerability that you found has already been patched. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. And, so. and we send it to Apple. Apple okay. knows about that. They basically even credit us for finding this vulnerability. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So when that update came out, your name was in there somewhere if you <laughs> dig on the details. It is already there on Apple's oh, website, yeah. That's very. <laughs> Are there any funny stories that happened along the way as you were developing, like any back and forth communication or anything like that? Uh, anything well, you think of? As soon as we found it, we, we sent, sent them, hey, like, here is a bug, and uh, you guys can fix it like, by this. Yeah. Uh, and uh, basically, before I talk, we sent them the slides like, to make sure that like, they're okay with it. Hey, guys, we found this. We want to talk about this, this, this funny thing. Okay. They say, oh, yeah, looks good. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll have a, like a friendly communication with okay. these Apple guys. And that was when the very first thing you found. You, so you sent them a slide deck, right? <laughs> and how, how, what was the reaction to the slide deck? Positive? Yeah, yeah? absolutely. Yes, as you see, we uh, presented it on a DevCon, and they said, yeah, sure, guys, like looks good, like great research. Awesome. Yeah, so. Well, that, that's an interesting story. What advice would you give someone just getting involved with pen testing? Pen testing? Yeah, any, any advice in general? I would say I learn a lot from uh, other people work. So I start uh, reversing jailbreaks by like Pango team, by like look at the desk, and I learn a lot from this kind of uh, tools. Okay. Before I can create my own. Okay. Yeah, so, so learn off of others. Yeah, that's, learn that's those always tools. like a really great source of uh, exploitation techniques and, and how, how the even like not that critical vulnerabilities can be exploited. Okay. Yeah, I can say I learned a nice. lot from those guys. All right. Well, what other awesome things are you working on? Are you working on, you know, what's next for you? Are you also doing side projects, anything like that? Well, yeah, I'm, uh, I co-founded the, the Pride Apple team. Uh, we focus it on uh, software and hardware exploitation. So okay. we're playing with some kind of uh, mobile hardware, trying to make our own hardware to, to connect to our phones. Interesting. It's okay. The, the way to make a hardware attacks and so on. Okay. Uh, first, I was uh, made a jailbreak for TVOS. Oh, for, really? For Apple TV, yeah. Oh, that's very cool. So you're working on a piece of hardware that makes it easier to research these sorts of things. Yes. Excellent. So, so I'm, I'm mostly this uh, software guy, but still, I'm, I'm interested in hardware. So this is an interesting question. Uh, if you were to go back to high school or, or university, is there any advice you would give to yourself if you could time travel back? Uh, that's a good question. I would say do what, what, you, what you like in that time, because I've never jumped all the jailbreaking if I'm not uh, trying to reverse engineer some of the computer games back when I was in a, in a school. Yeah. Okay. So this is how I jump in. So I was like, yeah. if you like it, if you're interested in it, just, just keep doing it. Yeah. yeah. And you'll eventually find a niche where you can use your skills and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, like, come speak at DEF CON. Many years later, I, yeah, I, I reuse these skills here. Okay. So what, is there any certain hardware that you use that maybe a lot of people don't know about? that you could give them a tip? Like, you know, all of us have like that favorite piece of hardware that we have. Um, what would that be for you? I would say uh, the debug cables for iPhones are useful. So okay. there are reverse engineering protocols. How okay. the, for example, lightning or 32-pin uh, cables work. Yeah. And that's, 
they are pretty useful for, for debugging, for like kernel debugging. So, okay. Uh, the problem is that you need to create this cable by your own. Oh, really? But, but there is all the schematics available uh, online. Okay, what, what's the name of it? Is it just called an, a debug cable? It's not it's, uh, You just Google for a lightning um, cable, like reverse engineering, and there's like a schematics all about that. Uh, yeah, so okay. You can use it for debugging, you can use it like for regular charging the phone, you can use it for a lot of things. That's so, great. Yeah. A little uh, a Swiss Army knife for debugging. Yes, yeah, so that's good. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, what's your favorite part of DEF CON? Uh, I really want to jump right now on the hardware village and like play more with, with the hardware. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, as I say, I'm. Previously, I was doing only software. Now I'm trying to like to switch to the hardware. Hardware's so, fun. Yeah. yeah. It's it's this, where all the fun tools are at. Want to visit like that part of DEF CON? Uh, now, how has just the increased interest in hacking lately. Like if you watch the news, hacking oh. has probably been mentioned more than any time it's, ever in the last it's, year. It's very hot topic now. How has that affected what you do? Or like, I, I know that even for me, people come up and say, oh, you're involved in hacking, huh? And they see what they see on the news. Have you had any of that? Or has it changed any way that you're doing the research? Just a general public's thoughts on hacking? Well, that's why we're trying to be like, white hackers to work with vendors mm -hmm. to make sure that we, we help to make it like more secure, not just like a bad guys that, that we hear in the news that like hack everything. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, I would say yeah, hacking is right now it's really hot topic, like exactly for the last few years. Yeah, and that seems like the theme. There's a couple villages here where that is their theme. I think hardware hacking village, the theme is how vendors can work better with hackers. That's, that's what we're trying to do, like to make it more secure. We've always heard some people say jailbreaking's bad, you don't want to do that. What are your thoughts on that? I would say that a lot of people expect uh, public jailbreaks, uh -huh. and they still like trying to like to push researcher, hey, you're gonna release it, why why you do research if you're not releasing it? I, okay. I just wanna say that a lot of researchers do it for internal usage. Just yeah. for like for like their challenge, not not for uh, uh, releasing it for public. Okay. Yeah. So I think like we will see less public jailbreaks in the future years. Really? Uh, interesting, interesting. So, do you have a number one rule in hacking? Any uh, thoughts there? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I would say, when I was doing this Apple Watch jailbreak, I have a lot of patents. I know that it is doable, and just try doing it for like this way, I fail, right? This way, I'll fail, so I just... Mm, try, try, try like, again. Like, like a brute force in it, yeah, until I found a way when it worked. Awesome. Yeah. So awesome. As I say, it takes like more than two weeks to like dump some part of the kernel, and after that, it was it was easy. Really? Wow. That's a long two weeks, though, right? <laughs> yeah. It was, it was fun. All right. Well, thanks again for talking with us today, Max. We really appreciate coming by. If you want to learn more about Max's research or how to jailbreak uh, your own Apple Watch, uh, where's a good place to start? Mm. Do you have a website or anything like that they can learn more uh, about it? I mostly post on Twitter, yeah, and we have a blog on the Lookout uh, with uh, details uh, about this Apple Watch jailbreak. So okay. That will be the, the good sources. All right. And of course, check the white paper. There is really detailed mm. uh, exploitation of some of the bugs that were used in uh, Apple Watch jailbreak. So okay. Um, readers want to like create their own. Yeah. Start with the white paper. There is like even like uh, working code that you can just copy paste and try uh, to exploit kernel by all. Okay. Of, of course, like it's a patch that we're not doing this. Well, we'll put the links to his blog, the blog, and also to the white paper. We'll put it in the description below this video. How's that? Sounds good. Perfect. And your Twitter account. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let us know what custom settings that you're using on your jailbroken Apple Watch in the comments. And don't forget to click subscribe while you're at it. This is Troy, this is Max, once again with Hacker Warehouse TV. And until next time, remember, keep it between the laws. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Max.